This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Welcome back to another episode of making over a hundred year old home for my mother-in-law. I'm April, I'm the suitcase designer, and this month on the channel, we have made some serious progress in my mother-in-law's house as we update the design in her 100-year-old plus Pacific Northwest cottage. Today, we're gonna to be starting on the dining room. We've already finished the living room, the mud room, the laundry room slash water closet, and today it's time to finally transform this cluttered dining room and turn it into a very cozy space filled with antique collectibles and so many vintage pieces that my mother-in-law has collected throughout the years. Here are some shots of what the dining room used to look like. You can tell that it's very cluttered, it tends to collect a lot of papers. Similar to the living room, we're trying to work on a really small budget for this space. We spent a lot of money in the water closet and in the kitchen. And I hope by the time this video is out, the appliances have officially arrived after months of delay. We wanna kind of scale back and try to just incorporate the pieces that my mother-in-law already has and only buy what's absolutely necessary for the space and I pulled you guys on Instagram and asked you if you wanted to know all of the budget breakdown for the water closet and 99% of you guys said yes so that's going to be a video coming up next week and I will unveil the entire price of the water closet because it is quite shocking and no one guessed how much it actually cost so my job in this project is not to go out and buy a lot of new furniture my position for this particular job is to really make the pieces that she already has work. So if I'm not doing any design work, what am I actually doing for this? Good question. I'm looking at these piles of things throughout each room. I'm assessing the function of their space, how they use their space in their daily lives and how we could make it better. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace and thanks to Squarespace, I'm gonna be launching finally my very own suitcase designer website where I can offer consultations and advice for small spaces for you guys. I can do this because Squarespace makes it easy and possible for me to sell products on my website and they make it easy for me to transfer old domains or buy new domains without any hidden fees. And all of their websites are optimized for mobile, which is absolutely necessary these days. If your brand's in need of a stronger online presence, you can head over to squarespace.com and start your free trial. And then once you're ready to officially launch your website, you can click on the link in the description box to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But thank you Squarespace for sponsoring another makeover. And now back to the dining room. If you've been following this series very long, you'll know that we started with a massive declutter of the living room and we gathered all of my mother-in-law's antiques that she's collected since she was a little girl. Some have been handed down from her mother, her grandmother. All of those things have been hiding in boxes. So my goal throughout this whole thing was that we could eventually pull all of those out and make space for them in the house. If you've been watching the series at all, you already know we went with a grayish paint and we added the white trim to the top. What's different from the mudroom and the kitchen is that in the dining living area, they actually have a really beautiful crown molding. What I wanted to do was kind of lift the ceilings before they were brown, very ugly brown, and just painted them a very crisp white. And we took it from the molding all the way up to the ceiling. This did so much for the space. It really just transformed it along with changing all of those yellowed globes from the ceiling fans.
So one of the first things we did was to swap out this table. It was just a little too oversized for the space. They want a big table whenever their family is in town. Everybody likes to play cards around the table, but I feel like adding a smaller table that hopefully has a leaf in it, something that we can expand, is just going to be better for them overall. Then they're gonna have more floor space and room to actually walk around the table. But also tables can be very expensive to just buy and replace. So that's why we're gonna use the one that we already have have in the garage. This is one that she had from one of her kids. They didn't want any more. So we're going to try and use this one. And then my mother-in-law actually looked on Marketplace and she was able to find a set of four chairs and they were extremely cheap. This is kind of her filler furniture. It gives her time to find those exact pieces that she wants. And we didn't like the color, like the orangey nature of the chairs that she had from Marketplace, but because these were so cheap, we decided, please don't give me any hate for this. We're, let's experiment with them a little bit. Let's go crazy because we can always even give them away on Marketplace later and then she can buy chairs that she really wants once she finally finds those. But right now, these chairs are working for us, so we're gonna keep them. We just spray painted them. There was a lacquer spray paint at the store, so we just tried it. I'll be honest with you, it's not a perfect coverage. It's kind of runny in some spots and we had to go in with the paintbrush a little bit. So it really has that cozy cottage, like lived in feel, which is amazing, but it's not perfect. reasons why we painted them this dark like black color was because we wanted to match them to those two chairs you probably saw in the living room makeover. Those are chairs from Pottery Barn that she had. The whole purpose behind getting those two Pottery Barn chairs was that there are two that we can easily pull over to the dining room and they'll be comfortable for guests. The only purpose of the dining room outside of functioning for playing cards and eating is to house all of her antique dishware. I'm not a dishware collector, so I'm sorry if I say any of these things wrong, but we wanted to bring in all of the antique dishware that she had, but the question always remained, where are we going to put it? We got rid of the hutch from the mudroom because it was actually broken. The glass was broken on it and it just wasn't functioning for them. It was so big, but the drawers just weren't working and it was just better to get rid of that one and start fresh. So we've been searching for the perfect setup for her for a while and we kept coming up short, but she did find this beautiful cabinet on Marketplace, an antique that she absolutely loved. She didn't even tell me about it. She just got it and then she's like, look, and it fit perfectly in the space. It took a while of like shuffling around to see what we wanted to store under there. And in the end, we settled on putting all of her jadeite in this cabinet because jadeite is very heavy and this is solid wood. jadeite to live in the you know behind these solid doors i wanted her to actually see them because they're so special to her because she's more of the maximalist and doesn't mind some of the busy nature that i typically don't do i wanted to put some of her jadeite out as a display for her something that she can change out as she wants she can change out seasonally she can do away with them completely you might not be somebody who likes the busy nature of things in your house and that's okay but she does and I think it's just 
so beautiful. And on top of that, she had these candlesticks that I actually used in this holiday video. <laughs> I was using them upside down and I put um, like berries, I think, in them or chocolates on them. And then later she came over, she's like, did you know these were candlesticks? So me just trying to use things in the wrong way. But then what do we do with all of the other uh, dishware that we have to store? That was the question. So we were looking around for any ca china cabinets that we could find and they were so expensive. Our favorite ones were a couple thousand dollars, but we can't spend that for the space because we splurged in other areas. So we're trying to pull back and we ended up finding this one. I believe this was from Wayfair. Came over there one day because they had put it together one night. And when I got there, she had pulled out all of her dishware and she had them arranged in shelves. The top shelf was from her grandmother. The lower shelf was her mother's and then the bottom were hers. I just thought it was so special and it's such a unique way to tell your story in your space and to tell her story to her friends. also added the same pair of curtains that we had in the living room to the dining room space. We chose to do something very light with the curtains because it is a small space and the walls are already grayish. We don't want to make it any darker during the day so we chose to go with light curtains so that the light can still shine through and I love how it just warms up the space. And before we jump to the afters, we have been doing not only this series, but we've been doing makeovers for over a year on the suitcase designer. I'm gonna link some of my newest ones in my personal apartment that kind of reflect more of my style. So I hope you guys will check those out. This is the moment you guys have been waiting for. Here is our finished living and dining room, cozy cottage.
much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed finally seeing the full living room, dining room together. If you've missed any episodes of this series, like the extreme declutter or doing the mud room, the laundry room, I will leave all of those linked for you in the comment section or otherwise I will see you at the end of the week for a breakdown of the budget for renovating the water closet. So thanks for watching. Happy holidays, everybody.